I'm thrilled that we're doing a play that, that really is, I think, for the whole community. You know, that this is a story that you can share with your family, that it is a, um, a theater that is appropriate for all ages, and uh, uh, it is a great opportunity, I think, particularly in sort of trying economic times, for people to come together and have a really great evening together. When I first heard that there was an adaptation of Around the World in 80 Days, I hadn't read the novel since I was a kid, and I probably read an abridged version when I was very young. Uh, and, I, and I knew the movie. I, I loved the idea of that much adventure on stage. I, I absolutely fell in love with the fact that we do travel all the way around the world. That uh, in the course of a, you know two hours in the theater, we are on trains and boats and elephant back and uh, uh, we meet all these different characters. In a play like this, you depend on a great cast, uh, a really flexible, versatile, uh, funny cast, people who get comedy and who, who understand uh, theatricality, and I've been really lucky to have five actors, so uh, who are really remarkably talented and uh, enormously generous with each other, um, and willing to be as silly as possible and then as serious as possible. Uh, so working with them has been an absolute joy. It's a trip I'd gladly take again. I'm the straight guy, really. Phileas Fogg is the straight guy in the play. Um, it's hard working with these actors. Some of them, are, uh, you know, they're all very talented. And um, Passepartout is, a, is a, a natural comic and he's got a lot of clown abilities. And it's very interesting watch, working with him. And I sometimes watch him instead of being in the scene with him. Um, but uh, it, it's, uh, if the characters are true, and certainly we're trying to make him true and, true and honest uh, fellow in Phileas Fogg, uh, you believe in the story, you believe in the situation he's in, and it's comical in that respect, the way he's dealing with it. And all of us are dealing with the um, relationships and the, and, the, and the circumstances that we're in, in a, in, a, in a humorous way, not making it funny because we, the characters are in a very difficult situation and how do they get out of it. So they're going to see a very exciting, fast-moving, paced uh, travel log of uh, uh, several people uh, flying around the world in, in a short period of time, in 1872. <laughs> well, the inspiration came from uh, initial discussions with Preston, where uh, we talked about Victorian uh, toy theaters, and that would be a that would allow us license to have some toys, and. Uh, who doesn't like having toys to play with? We have little laugh in doors so that they pop open and they deliver a line and they're gone again. Um, a turntable so you can walk on the turntable and do those old, you know, walking jokes. Um, the hard thing about designing a show like this is I can come up with a whole bunch of stuff because that's me sitting in a studio by myself at a drafting board drawing fun, what I think is fun. We don't know if it's fun until we have a group of people playing with it. They used to have little toy theaters and usually they're about, oh, 24, 30 inches. And it's a representation of a, of a theater and it was printed on cardboard sometimes mounted onto wood, but printed on cardboard. And you would get the toy theater for Romeo and Juliet. So you would have the proscenium and you'd have a set of legs and a backdrop so that you have these frames and a balcony. And then you have little sticks with little characters. Uh, and you could bring those on and whoever was controlling the stick would deliver the dialogue. So that's kind of the inspiration. <laughs>